Hey, it's John with Vision Advisors. Thank you for joining us for what I think is going to be an extremely informative webinar. You know, one of the areas as I'm having conversations with producers just like you listening to this call is, is really trying to find that unique opportunity to explore a market that's underserved. We're fortunate to have on the call today a gentleman that I've grown to really respect because of his knowledge in the industry. And as we look at a, an issue that we're dealing with called longevity and the fact that people today are going to live longer in retirement than previous generations, they're going to need sustainable income for a longer period of time. How do we solve that problem and how do we utilize the financial tools and resources that we have available? maybe you didn't know were available to be able to work with business owners and the more affluent clientele that you may have an opportunity to work with to solve that problem. Mr. Bill Jackson, we've known Bill for a while. He's a good friend of ours, works with uh, our relationship with Platinum Partners, and we're happy to have Bill on the call today really talk about a unique strategy that I think you're going to find interesting and you're going to want to know more about after we get through this today. So, Bill, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm so excited that you're going to take some time to share about the 412E3 concept with our viewers and listeners today. Hey, thank you, John. It's a pleasure to be here. And, you know, uh, this happens to be an area that I'm really passionate about. Uh, I've been involved in ERISA matters really for most of my career and, frankly, have had some, some great success. Uh, with several carriers that I've worked for running their qualified plans divisions. And I think that uh, w what interests me is that we've, we've got this huge market segment of people who own or are important or controlling uh, people in small businesses around the country. But for whatever reason, uh, oftentimes they're kind of left alone. And there are many, many opportunities with these business owners, uh, whether it be succession planning, tax planning. Today, we're going to focus on how we can help these individuals save tax dollars during their peak earning years. That's, that's really the, the essence of what we're going to talk about today. Um, but, you know, most of these business owners have, you know, common needs and, and interests. And I would just urge you, if you're looking for uh, potential people to contact and to work with uh, in this space, I would, I would urge you to just look through your current book because you'll find uh, individuals that you may have sold annuity products to, that you may have sold life products to, that surprisingly own or are very close to the controlling interest in a business. And if you can expand your outlook, to cover uh, the needs of these organizations, you'll be richly rewarded and you'll, you'll fulfill a really important need. And that's the need that John alluded to in terms of helping uh, these business owners not only solve tax problems, but generate a great, secure, uh, lasting retirement income. Most of these business owners have common concerns. They're concerned about growing their wealth. They're concerned about retaining that wealth and transferring it at death. But the most important thing that we can do is help them preserve that wealth. If you have a, fi a professional, as an example, let's say you've got a doctor um, or an attorney who's making maybe half a million dollars a year, we, we've got to realize that that individual is probably, in most major states, giving up something like 50 cents on the dollar to taxation. Most prominent law firms in our country state that taxation is the single greatest drag on wealth creation. So if we can hit a tax planning home run for some of these <clears throat> small business owners, particularly professionals, attorneys, accountants, uh, consultants, architects, uh, doctors, dentists, these individuals are, are, have a common issue, and that is severe taxation uh, of their earned income. So they'd really like some kind of a solution that would reduce the impact of taxes on their income. But also, if they're trying to grow their money, they're concerned about the impact of taxes on their earnings. 
And one of the big concerns for many of these very visible professional organizations is protecting assets against the claims of creditors. The, um, uh, and beyond that, like all um, U.S. citizens, they're concerned about guaranteeing some kind of a retirement income and maybe effectively transferring wealth to the next generation. But we're going to see in a moment how the 412E plan really is one of the few solutions that can provide a solid, defensible answer to all of these concerns and questions. Um, these properly designed plans, they provide really the most significant tax deduction that, that you can achieve uh, in the current environment. And I'll tell you why this is so important. A tax deduction today into a qualified retirement plan doesn't just mean saving taxes on the money that went into that plan. It may qualify that organization for that 20% pass-through deduction. You know, that pass-through deduction for most professional organizations phases out at about $321,000 per year income for someone fi married and filing jointly. So if you can contribute to a qualified retirement plan, reduce the gross income of that employee or that business owner to a level below 321000 you've probably just saved them. You've gotten them uh, another over $60,000 deduction, probably saved them uh, at least $20,000 in taxes, in addition to the tax savings on the contribution to the qualified plan. So having this kind of an option goes way beyond just the uh, the deduction that's provided by the contribution to the plan. It can be a, a, a real uh, uh, game saver, so to speak, in the business's overall tax planning. Again, with this kind of an approach, you're going to get tax-deferred growth. You're going to get uh, great credit protection, guaranteed retirement income, and perhaps income tax-free death benefits. Okay. Um, We've already referred to this a little bit, but you know the Pension Protection Act actually provided additional opportunities to the already robust design possibilities available to sole proprietors and small business owners. So in the small business space, the micro plan space, defined benefit plans are not an endangered species, only in the large corporate plans. That's where we see defined benefit plans being phased out just for frankly, for cost reasons. Um, so let's take a look at some of the different types of qualified plans because, you know, a defined benefit plan, like a 412E plan, may not be correct for every business owner. I'd like you to keep a couple of things um, in, in mind. Uh, you may have a, a business owner that is making pretty good money but has a fairly modest deferral objective and also, perhaps they have a widely fluctuating uh, profit picture. In other words, they're doing great this year. Next year, maybe not so good. If you've got that kind of a scenario, you probably want to focus on something like a, a solo K plan where um, you could generate fifty to $60,000 in deferrals each year for that individual. but um, in, in a bad year, uh, maybe the contribution would be not so much. So for organizations with, you know, that need flexibility, that have widely varying uh, profit pictures from year to year, maybe a defined benefit plan is not the best way to go. Um, but on the other hand, defined benefit plans offer the highest level of deferral available. Uh, and we see for an individual, say, ranging in age from 48 to maybe 54, we see plans uh, of this type being able to deduct and defer for one individual amounts in the 178000 to maybe even $430,000 uh, level, depending, again, depending on the features chosen and how the plan is designed. Um, but 
I think that you've, you've got to realize that to make a defined benefit plan work, you've got to have an organization that has stable income, at least for the next three to five years. You also, um, you, you want to make sure the organization has the correct demographics so that the expense of including employees is modest, not overwhelming. And what I like to say is that if you have a business owner that's age 48 or older, if you've got, say, six or fewer employees, and they tend to be of younger ages, now I'm not talking about the people with an ownership interest. It doesn't matter, the older the better for those individuals, but for the rank and file employees, younger employees, less salary than the owner, um, then the defined benefit plan is gonna make great sense. You know, if you have 40 or 50 employees in an organization, a defined benefit plan is probably not going to be a cost efficient approach because you're going to have people of all different ages and salary levels and it's going to probably be a very expensive plan. That's why a lot of the larger plans have been phased out. So um, there are a lot of different factors that impact upon what you can do in a defined benefit plan. And John, I, I, I'll just share with you, I'm going, I'm going a little bit broader right now than just the pure 412E plan. Uh, and I'm doing that for a purpose. I think it's, it's important for us to survey the total market, not just 412E, but uh, just the traditional defined benefit plan market space, because for some clients that can work really, really well. Um, the amount uh, that you can generate in terms of um, contribution is dependent on the features selected in the defined benefit plan. You know, if you have a lump sum distribution plan with just ordinary investments, um, you know, you're probably going to be limited to 175 to 200,000 in contribution. If you have uh, things like joint and survivor income, uh, uh, lump sum plus a death benefit, like we might have in a 412E plan, then the, you're going to see the potential contribution go way up. I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of financial professionals have gravitated towards that 412E approach is because generally speaking, from a tax planning standpoint, the deduction, the deferral is going to be significantly greater than it would be with just, say, a traditional defined benefit plan where you're in investing the money in assets under management or something of that nature. So the inclusion of life insurance in the plan dramatically enhances the, uh, the, the deduction that is received uh, for the contribution to the plan. There's some other uh, additional benefits that can be built into a plan, like disability income. However, m those kinds of benefits are, frankly, highly restrictive and uh, probably uh, not too popular uh, unless there's some unusual tax necessity to utilize them. So let's take a look at the potential, you know, the tax savings. We're talking about in a, even a 40% bracket. We're talking about potential tax savings of 71 to maybe uh, 296,000, depending on the, the form of plan implemented. Um, the cost of implementing these plans is really pretty modest. Uh, we have a couple of carriers that are strong in the 412E space, one being Lafayette Life, the other being uh, Anico. And both of them have a really, really reasonable design and implementation fees and really uh, efficient annual administration fees. Both of those organizations are going to be at the lower end of these design and administration fees listed here at about $1,500. The other fees I've listed, $15,000, $7,500, would be, uh, you know, if you're going out and you know, going to a law firm, having a custom plan designed, and then looking to an ERISA administrator uh, to run that plan for you. So what we are offering through our uh, resources and our carriers is a very economic alternative. Um, so let's just talk again about the strengths and advantages. Game-changing tax deductions. 
really the highest level of creditor protection that you can achieve anywhere, frankly, uh, and against any creditor except perhaps the Internal Revenue Service. Um, substantial guaranteed lifetime income, a income tax-free death benefit for heirs, and again, the ability, one of the few ways, if you've ever talked to business owners about succession planning, about purchasing key person insurance, about uh, some kind of an executive compensation program, the first thing out of that business owner's mouth is how can I deduct uh, the premiums for the life insurance coverage that I would like to like to purchase? And um, this is this is about it. So. Uh, being able to purchase life insurance coverage, uh, uh, frankly, at a tax discount is an extremely attractive alternative. Now, there is a tax impact to the employee when life insurance is purchased this way. It's called the PS58 cost, but it's a very, uh, very minor uh, tax impact to the employee considering the life insurance benefit that's being received and the tax deductibility of the premium. Okay, so, you know, again, what I would do is I would advise all of you to review your contracts, spot these affluent professionals that may be in your current book or they're in local businesses that you work with. Set up a fact-finding meeting uh, in order to proceed what you're gonna need and what we're gonna make available to you uh, after this call uh, a, uh, a a producer's guide and also a uh, a fact finder that includes an employee census so that you can get started in this market space and where appropriate present that focused defined benefit plan now let's talk a little bit uh, for a moment about the difference between a traditional defined benefit plan and a 412e plan the 412e concept is also known as a fully insured plan. Now this gives the the client and the employee uh, a real high level of security as to how this plan is going to perform. Um, and uh, the, the typical investments that are utilized in a fully insured plan are typically, now you can do it all with a guaranteed return annuity, but most plans are implemented using a 50% contribution to a guaranteed whole life contract and 50% into a guaranteed uh, a, a, new, a deferred annuity contract. And in doing that, these plans are able to, like I said, maximize deductions where you might only be able to get $170,000 into a traditional defined benefit plan for a given client. You might be able to get 280, 290, maybe $300,000 uh, for an affluent client into a 412E plan. So uh, dramatically higher levels of deductible contributions, completely guaranteed uh, benefits. And I think that um, one thing you'll need to educate your clients about is that this is, this is strictly it, and, and most importantly, a tax planning play. Keep in mind that most clients that adopt this kind of a plan are going to be saving 50 cents on the dollar in taxes. So they've already, in effect, doubled their money when they get into this kind of a plan. The growth inside the plan is, is not great because the way defined benefit plans work if the growth is kept modest on a guaranteed basis, then clients can continue to achieve that nice tax deferral this year, next year, and the year after. If you were to put the money in a defined benefit plan into some kind of a go-go gain type vehicle, what you would see is every year the contribution, the deductible contribution would go down and it could go down substantially. So the 412E plan is a unique solution to providing superior deductible contributions today, tomorrow, and years downstream. So really a great approach 
and helping uh, helping your clients, your business clients, retain more of what they worked so hard for. So, John, that's about it for the overall presentation of the 412E concept. What I'd like to do now is if you have any questions uh, or uh, concerns that you'd like to, to focus on, maybe we can address those and make sure that uh, everybody's clear on all the factors that uh, are important when we're considering offering a 412E plan to a business owner in our community. Absolutely. Bill, one of the questions I think is going to come to mind uh, from many of the producers listening to this is, how do I engage in the initial conversation? Maybe I've got a small business owner or I've got a professional like a doctor or an attorney that could potentially be a candidate for this. What's a good conversation starter to really kind of position this unique opportunity within the tax code and really kind of help them see the big picture on the front end without having to dive super deep into the technical aspects of it? Yeah, I think number one, we should all understand that every successful uh, business owner is going to be concerned about taxation. Um, you know, I think that one of the most important things to do is if you're if you're speaking with an individual that you know owns or controls a small business, you want, you want to make sure that you position yourself correctly. You know, some people call this an elevator speech. But, um, you know, saying something to a business owner like, you know, my work, my passion is to help business owners like yourself plan for retirement in the most tax efficient way possible while taking into consideration other factors that could reduce, uh, you, you know, your retirement security, things like credit or protection. I have some unique solutions that have been helpful to literally thousands of business owners and these these solutions may fit in your situation what i'd like an opportunity to do is to sit down with you and kind of explore what your goals and uh, and objectives are not only now but for retirement and uh, maybe we can take a look at your tax picture and look at some strategies that might be able to dramatically improve your position That was good, Bill. Uh, as we're looking at particular pockets within a producer's book of business, we've talked about small business owners, we've talked about doctors, we've talked about attorneys. Are there other specific individuals or small business owner types that really fit this particular marketplace that may want to be uh, looking at in particular? Yes, uh, architects. Uh, individuals with successful farming organizations. Now, John, I want you to know I'm not making these up. These are cases I've actually worked on and you know brought to successful fruition. So the the farming community, you you might not think of you know them as being like a professional organization, but many uh, farmers are uh, making very good money, and uh, this kind of a plan can benefit them. Uh, very, very well. Uh, as I mentioned, architects are a great uh, option for uh, this kind of plan. Really, any uh, you know, engineer, small engineering firms, um, consultants. You know, there are a lot of people that consult, uh, or maybe even do some public speaking and that kind of thing that make very good money and could uh, could benefit from this kind of a plan. I think almost any business with five or fewer employees and a little bit older owner, and particularly an owner who maybe is trying to make up for lost time in terms of retirement planning. In other words, a, you know, a simple uh, IRA or Roth contribution or even a, you know, a SEP plan or something like that is really not uh, going to cut it in terms of income replacement for an individual that's affluent and say 45, 48 to 55 years old. Those people need to make up for lost time in terms of retirement planning, the defined benefit 412E plan is an excellent way to do that. But um, so really any small business with five or six or fewer employees is gonna be uh, a, a potential uh, resource for this. But I would also look to their income level and their deferral objectives. 
because that's a, a big factor. If uh, if they're if they're affluent, making good money, um, maybe two fifty uh, to five hundred thousand or more, then this is going to be uh, a tax planning home run for them. Frankly, yeah, that was actually going to be my next question in terms of the income levels. And are we really looking at it as an individual owner that's 45 or older, 50 or older, what's really the sweet spot for this in terms of not just the income levels that you talked about, but also the age where they've really got the time for this to marinate and grow to benefit them the most? 48 to 50 and older is the, um, is the sweet spot for this. Uh, but we, ha we are successful in doing it even for older clients. Um, let me give you a, kind of a, a specific example. Um, Sometimes people that uh, might even be nearing age 65, they're, they ha have a business operation, they're doing a good job, they're still making really good money. Um, we can do a basically, you know, we want to run this, have at, le at least five years to run this to retirement, but we can run the retirement age out to age 70 or something for a 65-year-old, contribute for five years, and many times with, uh, with individuals of that age, we see a 75-25 split between income taken out to be taxable and amounts put into the um, into the uh, uh, into the 412e plan. Uh, just you know, kind of an example. I, there was a uh, there were a um, couple of um, cousins who were uh, who were farmers who needed to do some serious uh, retirement planning in in just a few years. They were able to re reduce their taxable income to about twenty-five. Now, this is a more modest approach, but twenty-five thousand dollars per year, and put over a hundred thousand dollars a year into a defined benefit uh, plan, a four twelve e plan, for for the next five year period. You know, thereby getting a, a pretty substantial amount in their situation into uh, into that that retirement plan, if you will. Uh, so it dramatically improved their tax picture and uh, and got them well on the way to successful retirement planning. So it can work for small, you know, more modest, uh, uh, you know, deferral objectives uh, for older individuals like that. But uh, typically, you're going to be looking at individuals that are probably, you know, making a little bit more than that, probably making 250 to 500,000. Very good. Let me pose one last question to you, Bill, and then we'll wrap up. And, and I want to thank you for your time. It's, it's been fascinating. And I know those that are going to be listening to this or watching it online are going to have questions. Uh, but I, I guess the last question I would pose to you would be this one. What are the questions a producer should be asking that maybe they don't know they should be asking of the clientele that meet this age and, and income perspective? Now, John, I'll ask you: Do you mean uh, prior to a to an actual structured meeting with them, or during the meeting? Uh, are, are we assuming that the the agent has it kind of piqued the client's interest in terms of his description of what he does in a in terms of you know helping business owners with taxes and retirement, uh, or are we a actually in a in a meeting with the, that business owner and trying to you know uh, uh, uncover? goals, objectives, needs. Yeah, I think we could cover the second part of that, uh, Bill, in a, in, a, in a future dialogue with a producer. I'm thinking as the producer is going through their book of business and they're identifying, I've got a 48 to 50-year-old business owner or older that's making $200,000 a year or more, what do I need to make sure that I'm asking to be able to qualify this candidate and to make sure that I'm taking the right steps to identifying and properly vetting this individual before I take them too far down that rabbit hole. Yeah, I think um, I think it, it's it's really important to get a, a a feel for that you know that business owner's attitude towards taxation. I think it's also really important to find out a little bit more about uh, the business. You know, uh, uh, it isn't critical that it be a specific form of business organization proprietorship, um, partnership, LLC, S-Corp, C-Corp, but that's always a good question just to get out of the way so you know what you're dealing with. But I think the key thing is is to get a picture 
of, um, you know, what kind of demographics does the organization have? I think, uh, you know, if you wanted to say something to the business owner, I would say something like this, John. I would say, uh, Mr. Ms. Business Owner, uh, we have a number of very exciting uh, tax planning strategies that we can share with you. However, not all of these strategies fit in all situations. It's important for me to know, um, you know, n number one, um, you might inquire about the amount that they make, but that's kind of something that you might also want to treat with kid gloves. But I would definitely ask them, uh, how many employees do you have? And, um, you know, are they are they full part time and that kind of thing? I think that's a critical factor in determining whether a defined benefit plan will work or not for that organization. If they say 15, 20, 30 employees, that's pr the the 412 E plan is not going to be the solution uh, for that uh, for that individual. We might have to gravitate to some kind of a selective executive compensation plan that could potentially. Uh, you know, produce some some tax benefits, you know, something like a, a loan regime split dollar plan or loan regime premium finance program or something like that for that owner and maybe one or two key employees as opposed to trying to include everyone. Sure. Well, I think the key thing that I wanted to get out of this, and I think you've done an exceptional job of, of covering it, Bill, and thank you for your time, is to really expose our producers to understanding that there's a different way to do retirement planning when it comes to these smaller, higher net worth business owners that have a number of, you know, three, four, five employees and an opportunity there to really jumpstart their retirement. And for many of them, they don't know that this type of planning is available. Uh, everybody that walks in the door wants to have a 401k conversation or a simple IRA or a SEP conversation, and they're really missing some unique tax advantages to using this particular type of solution, not to mention the creditor protections that are available. So I think it's a really good start to a conversation that many of our producers that work with small businesses should be having, but maybe up to this point, didn't have enough information to, to have that conversation. I would agree, John. I believe that this is a uh, really an untouched market. It, it is not being explored adequately. Um, and I think that uh, when you take into consideration the tax planning home run that you can hit for one of these small business owners by utilizing a 412E plan, uh, I think that uh, it's well worth the time and effort to explore your book, to look for those individuals with five or fewer employees that are 48 years and older uh, and that are making good money and uh, maybe have a real need to, like you mentioned, jumpstart their retirement planning at a later point in life. Absolutely. Well, Bill, I want to thank you so much for being on the call with us today and taking some time just to share your, your wealth of knowledge. You are a walking encyclopedia of of most things financial, and I love every time I get a chance to talk with you because I always learn something. Uh, so thank you for taking time. Bill is going to be sending over to our office the producer guide he talked about and the fact finder that he mentioned. And so really your call to action is if you want to know more about 412 E3s, how they work, and have the tools necessary to be able to go out and start having those conversations, give us a call here at Vision Advisors, one 800 505-8489. Again, that number is 1-800-505-8489. And in addition to the resources Bill will be sharing with us that we will be sharing with you, I've developed a white paper on the 412E3 program. Be happy to send out that you can use. It's client approved for you to be able to start that conversation with your business owner clients and really see if you can move them down the path to creating some opportunity in the 412E space. Thank you for joining us for the call. We appreciate it. Give us a call at Vision. Let us know how we can help you. And we look forward to the next opportunity to help you serve your clients. Have a great day.